Also suspicious is the fact that Black Lives Matter designated a whopping eight million dollars to an out of country grant. What? I thought this charity was about addressing police brutality in the United States. Apparently to do that, you need to send eight million dollars to Toronto, Canada, to an organization named M4BJ. They purchased a $6.3 million, 10,000 square foot downtown property in Toronto. And I should also mention that M4BJ is run by Patrice's wife, Janaya Khan, because it is. She is the co-founder, believe it or not. And here's where it gets really interesting. Janaya Khan is gender non-conforming. These terms can be quite sensitive, so let me just use photos to illustrate my point. Janaya used to look like this, and now she looks like this. Now that information would be entirely irrelevant if it wasn't for the way that Patrice Cullors saw it fit to spend the rest of Black Lives Matter's money. Ready for some BLM pride? Well, according to their IRS form, $200,000 went to the Transgender Justice Funding Project. Another $200,000 went to the Transgender United Fund. Another $200,000 went to the Transgendered Law Center. Another $200,000 went to Black Transgendered Media. Another $200,000 went to the Transgendered Variant and Intersex Justice Project. Another 200K went to the transgendered district. By the way, if you're wondering what that is, it's purportedly going to be the all transgendered district. And I guess that's really, really important for black America advancement in society, I guess, or whatever. Another 200K went to the St. James Infirmary. That organization, by the way, is for, according to their website, it's run by sex workers and is for them. Specifically, escorts, BDSM workers, strippers, peep show workers, phone sex operators, and webcam performers. It was actually the St. James Infirmary that created the transgendered district. So that's just an organization within an or another organization, which by the way, you see a lot of when you go through these documents. So yeah, going to be apparently great big things involving sex workers in the future for black America. In continuation, the Center for Halstead received $200,000 from Black Lives Matter. They are Chicago's community center dedicated to securing the health and well-being of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered and queer people of Chicago. Similarly, we have the Audrey Lord Project, which received $200,000, and according to their website, they are a lesbian, gay, bisexual, two-spirit, trans, and gender non-conforming people of color community organizing <coughs> center. Another $400,000 went to Transgender Advocates Knowledgeable Empowering, or TAKE, as it's known for shorts. The founder of that organization is a transgendered individual by the name of Deranicia Duncan Boyd. Darren so basically all that money was given to Patrice's wife and she's donating all this shit to all this trans shit, bro. This is crazy as fuck. This is crazy, bro. This shit pisses me off. This shit pisses me off. This is fucking blood money that Black Pain has donated to y'all to be. And what era, what frustrates me the most is that that the black folks that need to hear this, they need to watch this. They're not going to watch it. They're not going to hear it. They're not trying to hear it because they hate Candace Owens. The motherfuckers she needs to listen are not going to listen. Bruh, I'm like, how? Mm, mm, damn, bruh. Damn, dog. She is also the executive director of the Transgendered United Fund, which I mentioned earlier, which secured $200,000. So a total $600,000 of BLM money went to a transgendered woman named Daronicia Boyd, who is operating two charities. I found that piece to be very interesting. Here is Aranesia describing in a 2020 interview how they were able to use that money that was received to the organization to purchase more real estate. We're opening up a new um, resource center here and the resource center is almost three times 
as big as our last space that we was in. Um, so we have lots of space and lots of rooms for our clients to come in and enjoy. I noticed that real estate seems to be a common theme amongst these transgendered organizations. Remember, there's the first ever transgender districts, and there are also a couple of houses that are named on their IRS documents. For example, an additional $200,000 was given to the House of Tulip. According to their website, the House of Tulip provides zero barrier housing to trans and gender non-conforming people. But the one that really stood out as the most nonsensical is the $200,000 that went to the Griffin Gracie Retreat and Educational Center, known as House of Gigi for short. According to that website, they provide services and resources that positively impact the lives, history, and visibility of transgender, gender questioning, and gender non-conforming persons. They admit that they purchased a property in Little Rock, Arkansas back in 2019, and that property was supposed to serve as an oasis and a retreat for transgendered person. But they admit, also on the website, that they actually never held such a retreat. First, because their founder had a stroke and was recovering, and then it was COVID-19, so they still couldn't host a retreat. And despite having never hosted a retreat at this amazing oasis property that they purchased, in 2021, they announced that they purchased a second property next door to the first one. So, yeah. Now, all of the organizations that I just mentioned, none of them, not one, is up to date on filing a tax return with the IRS, which is required for charities. Because charities, remember, they don't pay taxes. In other words, I'm not able to tell you how any of these transgendered organizations spend the money that BLM poured into their organizations during the 2020 and 2021 tax year.